Hello everyone and welcome to this Video Song Frontier video. My name is Jay Whitefield and today we're actually going to um, be performing a small repair on the Dell Dimension 4100. But before we get on with that, it's uh, time for a channel update. Now, you'll have uh, no doubt noticed that um, the, there wasn't a video put out again on Saturday. And there's a good reason for that. You see, um, I'm still not feeling completely up to par at the moment. And, you know, I, I kind of feel that if I put out two videos a week, you know, at this moment in time, I, um, I will probably burn out and... Um, I'm pretty sure that the quality is definitely suffering. So, um, you know, I, th I think what I'll do um, is I'll just put out um, one video a week for the time being. And um, that will, you know, I will try and uh, make that happen on, um, I'm, I'm wanting to try a different time as well. Um, so um, I'm thinking Tuesday... You know, obviously, you know, um, I can't guarantee that this would be the same all the time. But um, I'd like to maybe get videos out for uh, Tuesdays, 8 p.m. Um, 8, 8 p.m. British time. Uh, so that would be 5 Eastern Standard Time. Um, uh, 2 Pacific Time. 2 p.m. Pacific Time. So, um... Yeah, 9 p.m. European, Central, uh, Continental European time. Anyway, um, I'm sure you'll be able to kind of work out, you know, your time zone. Plus, if you're subscribed to my channel, you'll be notified anyway about when videos are coming out. Anyway, <clears throat> you know, I'm hoping to do that, you know, just to try and capitalise on, um, you know, times that, the vid you know, my videos come out. You know, and, and um, maximum uh, maximum uptake sort of thing. Anyway, enough of that. I spent too much of my last video babbling. I spent ages editing all that out. So, this machine then. The Still Dimension 4100. The machine itself works absolutely fine. Only problem is, this DVD burner is kind of starting to lose the will to live. So what I propose to do in this video is add a new DVD burner. <laughs> um, and I got this one from the case which my server is now in. Um, I don't really need it in there because um, I mean I'm able to boot that from a USB drive if I need to. So um, that is going to go in here. One slight problem though, there does not seem to be any kind of provisions on this drive that will tell me what the jumper settings are. Normally they are kind of um, standard on CD-ROM drives and uh, optical drives of any sort, you know, um, when everything kind of became a tappy. So um, I think the best thing I will do is match the jumper settings on this drive to the drive that I actually remove. So. <clears throat> Without any further ado, it's um, it's time to um, get started. I think what I'll do is I'll uh, shed some light on the affair. There we go. So, <clears throat> yes, and I know you'll have all written down that Windows ME key now. So, first thing I need to do, <coughs> there's a thumb screw in the, in the back of the case, and then with, these, um, with, with this case style, what you do, you've got two latches, as it were. You press these two in, in the way, and then move the case back. Move the side panel back round. Now this, 
this is a classic example of Dell um, in their over over engineering stage. Honestly, um, kind of like you know driving a Mercedes from you know pre nineteen ninety four one. You just oops, that your Mercedes wouldn't do that. And look look at all this. You you've got metal that's RF shielding, and then this is plastic. The whole thing is actually rather heavy. Um, but it's going nowhere. I mean, you, you're going to have no bent aluminium panels. You know, none of that kind of nonsense for this case. And then you've got something that looks remarkably like a strut brace. You know, this this is kind of to help the machine handle properly around corners, you know. Let's say if you're taking it around the Nürburgring, ring, um, it'll, it'll actually, um, you know, it won't go all wobbly because you've got the strut brace that will keep the suspension in check, which is actually really, really quite good. I'm um, going to remove this, though, just uh, while I'm uh, sorting everything out. And um, I can't remember um, how you do it. There we go. Just put that there. Now, to be able to access the drives, this whole drive cage has to come out. See, the other side panel, you, you can't really remove it easily. So to get this drive cage out, we have to take off the front. That's actually quite easy. There's two wee tabs that you just kind of push down and then you push it forward. And then there's another tab up there. And then this comes away. Anyway, so now that that screw is removed, I do believe all there's left to do now is just to try and push the cage out. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> now bearing in mind that all the cables are still plugged in here. Um, and I really don't want to be removing um, every little cable. Um, so as you can see now the drives are out. And um, this case really doesn't look that good with uh, the drive cage uh, uninstalled. Literally, uh, the drive that I want to remove is the top drive. So literally what I'm going to do is remove the uh, CD audio cable, remove the IDE cable, and remove the Moldex cable. And then there's a couple of screws securing the drive to the case. Right. Okay, now to take now to remove this DVD burner. So next thing to do is insert this drive into the other drive's place. Line up the uh, screw holes and reinstall. So now the drive is screwed into place. All I need to do now is find and reattach the cables. So the IDE cable. There we go. Um, the Molex power connector. Good, now we have sound, uh, power. And uh, speaking of sound, rather, I need to now find the um, CD audio cable. And this isn't for playing audio CDs, mind you. Um, this is actually, um, and there it is, and this is actually meant for now, if I'm playing any games that require, that actually are using the CD audio track, you know, I, wanna, I want to at least have the option to be able to you know, play them as intended. So, now all that is sorted. Um, and there appears to not be anywhere near enough.
flex and give a little that's about. But um, I'm sure I'll find a way. Oh, yep, yeah, I think. Um, oh, all I need to do now is mount these um, loopy things up. Um, and then, well, <laughs> one would hope that the case will just, yeah, there we go, slide home. So that is everything reconnected. Now, before I actually um, set everything up back uh, where it was, um, I think what I'm going to do is bring through a keyboard and um, I'll test it on the big TV. All I really want to know is, does the drive register and, um, you know, maybe can the drive read a CD? I'll probably drop a Windows 98 CD ROM into the drive just to test that it actually registers and boots from it. Okay, we're plugged in. Um, <coughs> I had to go and try and find a, a kettle lead, um, but I'm not sure how well this is going to work because um, normally with... Um, you know, with these Dells, normally uh, when you plug them in, they uh, they will kind of spin up the fans briefly just to you know kind of let you know that they've got power or something. Or I don't know what it is, but it's it's part of their initialization. I, I don't like to question it. You know, it's it's their custom, it's not mine. Um. But the reason I'm put. The uh, reason I'm putting the front panel back on is because, well, I kind of need the power button. Okay, so we finally have the drive installed. Anyway, um, I think it's time to test out the drive. So, Grab a Windows 98 second edition CD ROM there. Get ready for Windows 98 Bagel. No, 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 no. No. I want to get this thing to boot from the CD-ROM. Um, quite a bit, quite a bit. <laughs> okay. So we've got floppy atapi CD ROM ID HDD. That would work better. <coughs> Seems that like this machine does not have a quick boot menu. Oh well. And there we go. We are booted from the Windows 98 bagel. Excellent. So now all that really remains is to um, reset this machine back up um, where it belongs. So I'll do that. So now the machine is set back up, pride of place back um, underneath the desk tucked away in a corner. Um, <laughs> yeah. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, Windows 95 Story Video Bagel and um, I will uh, throw it into the um, new drive. Okay, so this is loading up and hopefully what will happen is it will load up Power DVD. Yep, or Win DVD.
Oh yeah, that's what came with this machine. Oh yeah. So this seems to be playing absolutely fine. No problems. Well, it's coming up towards the end of August. And pretty soon, it'll have been a month since Windows 10 was released to the general public. With quite a bit of Actually, it's been 11 months now. <laughs> of course, one of the main features of Windows 10 that a lot of folks, myself included, myself included, is replaced by Windows 3.1.1. Now Windows like a, you know, like my mum changing the channel on the TV. <laughs> I'm not gonna repeat Jay Lino's joke because so does his. But here's another feature. It didn't say in Windows 95. But I will tell you this. I'll tell you this. I'm gonna power this DVD off now. <laughs> I need to get another DVD made up because um, I know this is getting tiresome. Like, um, yeah, install the DVD drive. Let's test it by playing the same old DVD yet again. Um. So there you have it. And um, you know, just just as a, a wee bit of curiosity, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into uh, Roxy uh, Easy CD Creator. And, yeah, basically what I will do is I'll just kind of see if uh, the driver's recognised by it. Yep. Uh, so the driver's recognised. And is the um, DVD-ROM drive. So there you have it. This machine is now up and running, and uh, the DVD drive in it works. Anyway, with that all said, I'd like to thank you all for watching this video.